I'm gonna show you my new favorite way to use Superbase. And this little gem is made possible thanks to Superbase's new MCP server. We're gonna go into what that is, as well as how to set it up. And then I wanna show you this really cool thing. So let's get into it. So an MCP server is just an API, but where the intended consumer is an AI agent or your vibe coding tool of choice, rather than a browser or a web server. So if you're using Cursor or Lovable or Bolt or Windsurf or Claude Code, there are too many to name. But these tools use MCP servers to add additional functionality. In the case of Superbase, this means your LLM doesn't just understand the web app or code base that it's running within. It can also introspect the shape of your database or create new tables with complex relationships or help you write much better authorization rules to secure your data. So let's get that bit set up first by heading over to superbase.com dashboard. This will prompt you to create an account if you don't have one yet, but then you wanna head over to your little avatar and click it, go to account preferences and then access tokens and generate a new token. We're gonna to call this one recipe-simplify and we'll explain what we're actually doing later. But here I'm just gonna generate my token and then copy this value and then head over to cursor. This is just a completely empty project where I'm going to create a .cursor folder and within that an mcp.json file. And then just going to paste this one in so I don't forget it and then head over to the Superbase docs for MCP servers. So this is a great reference for how to set up Superbase's MCP server in different environments like Cursor, Windsurf, VS Code, and all the rest. If we scroll down to the Cursor section, we'll see this JSON blob for setting up an MCP server. So let's copy that, head back over to Cursor and paste that one in. We then want to take our personal access token and replace this last string value here. And you'll see Cursor has detected a new MCP server for Superbase. So let's click enable. And now if we go to Cursor settings and then Cursor settings and look at our MCP servers, we can see our Superbase MCP server is enabled with a collection of tools that we can run. So we can close that one and our mcp.json file and head over to our chat window so we can start using that Superbase MCP server. So we want to create a new Superbase project called recipe-simplify. So you can use any model you'd prefer. In my case, I'm using Claude for Sonnet just because it came out quite recently. So now I'm going to click this button or you can just press enter. And now Cursor is going to create a new Superbase project, which is only possible because we configured that Superbase MCP server. It's going to be called recipe-simplify and it wants to check which organizations we have in Superbase. So it wants to run the list underscore organizations tool. So we're going to say, sure, run that tool. We then get this list of available organizations. You may just have the one, your default organization, but in my case, I have several, I'm just going to say, use my default one. So it's now going to check how much this is actually going to cost us. So let's run that tool and we'll see this one is going to be free. I'm pretty happy with the cost of free. So I'm gonna say, run this tool. And now it wants to create our new project and it's created our new Superbase project. It's given us the project ID and name, organization, region, and the status is active underscore healthy. Now you may need to wait a little bit of time for your project to fully spin up, but once it is active healthy, we can start using it and building out our application. Actually, before we get too excited about that, I'm gonna take this project ID and copy it to my clipboard and then open up our Superbase MCP.json file, which holds our configuration. And I'm going to scope this MCP connection to a specific project dash ref, which is going to be the ID of our Superbase project. I'm gonna save this one and also create a new file in the rootmost part of our project called dot git ignore. And I'm going to put our dot cursor slash mcp dot JSON file in there. And this is just because our mcp.json file now has this secret that we don't want to commit to source control. So if we're using something like Git or GitHub, then we wanna make sure that that file is excluded from all of the files we're checking in. And so now we can close these two files and our whole file explorer, the rest we can probably do just in this chat. Which brings me to the bit that I'm most excited about, which is that the Superbase MCP server can create edge functions. This means you can spin up little single task functions 
but they're backed by the entire Superbase system. So you need to store some data? Great, you've got an entire hosted Postgres instance just ready to go. Need somewhere to put some files? Great, use Superbase storage. Need a whole workflow engine with cron jobs and queues and background tasks? Great, it's already configured. You can use as much or as little as you need. So let's use just a little and deploy an edge function using the Superbase MCP server, which takes a URL for a recipe's website and pulls out just the title of the recipe, a short description, the ingredients list, and the steps for the method. This should use OpenAI's API to access the website and return a JSON response with the following keys. Title, description, ingredients, and method. Oh uh, yeah, I forgot to mention, I wanna build a recipe website without all of the ads and like a life story of how their great great grandfather taught them to soak beans in a particular way, which is what inspired them to become a recipe blogger. I just wanna know how to make the recipe. Like check this out. Let's have a look for a recipe to boil rice. We'll click this top one, Recipe Tin Eats, which is actually an awesome website that I get a lot of recipes from. But look how much you need to know to just like boil some rice. There's just, so many steps, all the different types of rice you could possibly have, all the different troubleshooting steps for boiling rice, some other recipes you might wanna make, a whole bunch of ads and then comments, cause why, why not have comments and ratings? Or well, check out this cursed website called Taste. And this looks fine. Let's click this recipe of the day. Northern Thai chicken and noodle, that, that sounds del What is this? Why do we now have like a banner ad that's framing the, and why is it auto playing an ad and then we scroll and there's ads here and there's more ads and then we're lazy loading even more <laughs> even more ads this is just ludicrous i just want to know the ingredients and the method for how to make this recipe so that's exactly what we've asked cursor to do here so we want to take a url for that horrible recipe website and pull out just the bits we need so title description and ingredients list and a method. And we could write this complex parsing logic ourselves, but we could also just get OpenAI to do it. And really the only bit we care about is that JSON response that just contains all of the bits about how to make the recipe. So let's run this to create our edge function. So it's asking us if it can use the deploy edge function tool. So we're going to say yes. And so it's gone off and created that function and then given us a list of things that we need to do. So we need to provide our OpenAI API key to our Superbase project. So let's head over to OpenAI and get our API key. So we wanna head over to platform.openapi.com where we need to sign in and then create a new secret key. The name for this one is just gonna be recipe dash simplify and I'm going to create my new secret key and copy this value then head on over to my Superbase project where we want to go back to our dashboard and your project may just be listed here but with my hundreds of projects I'm going to have to use the search to look for recipe dash simplify and then head over to edge functions and then in our list we have secrets where we want to paste our OpenAI API key and then let's just double check the name of that key. So it's openai underscore api underscore key, which we'll paste in here and then save. We can also have a look at the edge function that cursor has created. So the extract recipe edge function, we can click into it and then head over to code where we can see a whole bunch of stuff that we didn't want to have to write by ourselves. We can also head over to details where we have this convenient copy and pasteable curl command to invoke this function. And this includes our Superbase Anon key as an authorization header, which will need to invoke this function because we have enforced JWT verification enabled, which we do recommend. So let's copy this curl command and then head over to any terminal. I'm just gonna use the one in cursor. And the only thing we need to modify is rather than a name, we want to pass across a URL for our recipe's website. And let's just confirm that's what our edge function is expecting. So we wanna make a post request with the request body's JSON blob containing a URL for our recipe. And let's go get that awful website. Let's give it another refresh just so we can see just how ridiculous it is. Normal recipe website, not normal recipe website. So let's copy this URL and paste it in as the body of our request and press enter to run that curl command and send a post request 
to our edge function and we get back just the bits we want. So a title, description, ingredients, and our method. It took a while. OpenAI needed to go to that recipe website. It needed to pass all the information on the page, probably as well as all of those ads and everything else. It needed to pull out all of that important information and then return it as a JSON response. We probably don't wanna do that on every single page load. We probably wanna do that once and then maybe save it in a database. But where are we gonna get a database? Oh, that's right, we've got the entire Superbase stack. So let's just store it there. Again, we can use the Superbase MCP server to update my Superbase edge function to store the information that comes back from OpenAI in my Superbase database. You will also need to create a table in Superbase called recipes with columns for ID, created underscore at, description, ingredients, and method. The ID and created underscore at columns should be auto-generated. And it's spelt Superbase incorrectly, but I'm sure it'll be fine. So it wants to use migrations to create our recipes table, which is what we want. So let's run that tool. And it wants to deploy a new version of our edge function. So let's run that. So it's updated our edge function to store that data in Superbase. It's also thought about some additional things that we hadn't, like we might want a source URL for where the recipe came from and maybe an updated at column for if we decide to change that recipe. It's also added an index and row level security and apparently full text search for the titles. So awesome. And it looks like we run this in the same way. We make a post request passing across the URL of the recipe. So let's just run that again with the same recipe and we see all of that information is printed out again, but this time we have an ID, which presumably has been generated by Superbase as well as a created at timestamp. And we can confirm this has actually been written to our Superbase database by going over to the table editor and then clicking our recipes table. And we've got our row for our Northern Thai chicken and noodle curry recipe. But the cool thing is we've been able to spin up this single purpose edge function to solve this ludicrous problem that exists with awful recipe websites. And you could use the same Superbase project and spin up hundreds of these edge functions. They take seconds to create and are deployed at the edge all around the world. And if they need to store some data or save a file or add a job to a job queue, then they can without needing to spin up any additional infrastructure. So now that we have some recipes in our database, let's create a simple Next.js application to display our nice tidy recipes and also add some new ones we might wanna make. In fact, here's one I prepared earlier where we can put in a URL for a recipe like our simple how to cook rice recipe and we can simplify it. And then we get this super minimal version of our how to cook white rice recipe, which has just a description, our list of ingredients and the steps to actually make it. And we can look at our full list of recipes and they load super quickly because they're just grabbing that already prepared data from our Superbase project rather than loading this terrible website with just ads popping in all over the place. And if you wanna go deeper with Superbase and Cursor, then check out this video right here. We go through a series of tips and tricks to help you get the best possible results out of your vibe coding sessions. But until next time, keep building cool stuff.